Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 45. 45. Yeah. Jody Shelley. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Who else was in there? There's one more. It was a Dody Wood. Oh yeah, going way back, man. The boxers. That I guy love was it. a beast. Fantastic stuff. So uh, this is a kind of a special episode because it's the last episode of the regular season for us. So there's quite a lot to unpack. We're going to be talking a lot about Eric Carlson, him coming back from injury, which is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about the matchups that are going on in the NHL, along with our matchup specifically. Mm-hmm. Playoffs. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do a bracket <laughs> challenge, uh, which we're going to invite you to, and we'll give you the URL for that. Um, we're going to talk about the playoff format, which is not a good thing, I don't think, but we'll get into that as well. And uh, we'll do a Barracuda update to finish off. Very good. You ready to start the show? Ready. All right. Well, guys, this is the last episode for us from the regular season. I want you to make some noise. Ah, ah, Paul, we love you. Ah, and you're so good looking. Ah. I was, uh, I was channeling my inner John Root. Yeah. It's a little different, I think, when you don't have a whole crowd of people <laughs> cheering for you, and it's just you very, very different in, in your head. Yeah. I hope the people on the podcast and, and, and watching on YouTube were, were screaming for me. He practices these at home <laughs> by himself in front of the mirror. <laughs> Truly do not. You can tell. Um, it, it pays off. One other thing you can tell is that clearly we are in playoff mode here at The Fan Factor. Uh, thank you, very big thank you to Doug Benz. If you didn't see our last episode, please do watch that and get all the way to the end. Doug tells you all about everything going on with playoff mode mm-hmm. and all the merchandise and stuff that's in the store as well. So um, you can see right here I have a nice little pin, playoff mode pin that they're selling in the store, which is pretty awesome. Um, the shirts, if you go back to the watch, you got the shirts, uh, Joe Pavelski, Brent Burns, Eric Carlson. Well, the theme this year is neon. Yes. So they did everything in, in what looks like neon lights. Yeah. And there's going to be actual neon lights <laughs> at bars and stuff. Uh, again, go back to the last episode and you'll be able to see it. Um, but the, everything is neon, neon, the pucks, mm-hmm. neon, which they just released those a couple weeks ago, so some yeah. people saw those. So, yeah, the the pucks that are down here, um, you know, we have the Burnsy, the Carlson, the Kane. Um, also, just wanted to highlight, um, it's not the playoff mode stuff, but uh, today I was at the, the fan appreciation night, got the Game of Jones uh, bobble there, pretty it's awesome. so cool. It's really, <laughs> really cool. I do like it. Uh, we had the, the stick up a little bit higher, like a baseball bat. I guess Aaron didn't like it are up you, there. So. Are you a Game of Thrones fan? I, I am, actually. Yeah, because it... Have you watched? Not them a already? fanatic. Are you but caught up? Yes, I'm caught up. Okay, because they're coming out in yeah, like a, a week. Or exactly. Two. Yeah. So I don't know exactly. Th- I mean, this looks really, really good. I, I do enjoy that one. Also, a uh, big thank you to Pete Smoot who uh, traded the. Oh gosh, which one did he trade? Now I forgot which one we gave away, but it was the uh, yeah. Shimmick Hurdle Bobble that we got in return. Uh, that's that's the one I've been trying to go after, and so we uh, we got that. Don Father. You the Don. The Don Father one. Yeah, we had one. I had uh, Jonas sign the box for me, mm-hmm. so. Gave him one. It was a little extra special. Also, up here we've got the beanie, the uh, koozie, the hat, which is really, really nice. Big fat logo on the hat. Um, they had the magnets up there. It's actually stuck to the little metal thing there. <laughs> um, the socks are super awesome. I love those. And then, uh, of course, they have the uh, get your kids playoff mode ready as well. So they have the, the smaller shirts in there as well. Um, and then offset, we have like a Logan Couture one of these as well. And I mean, there's just a bunch of stuff. You guys yeah. really just go check it out. Um, and the, the mini stick. Don't this want to is all in the that. store. Yeah. This is, is all in the shark store. store. Yeah. Um, all of it's really, really awesome. I do love the neon theme. I think it's great. So. And the shirts are just like our shirts. Super, super soft and yeah. fit very well and uh, look good. Yeah. They are super, super soft. Plug in our merch, so. too. Anyway, yeah, our merch is awesome, too. You should check our store out. Anyway, um, Eric Carlson is back. He's back. He, he played tonight. He got in, I guess you can call it a practice game. Yeah. Before. Uh, we, I think we talked about we thought he was going to try and go yeah. for that. Um, I'm kind of glad he did, in a way, because if he hurt himself, right. it was in a game that didn't matter, versus mm-hmm. hurting himself like he did in the Boston game. Right. If he did that during a playoff game, then we're down to five defensemen, unless we dress seven. But right. Um, we'd be down a defenseman and a guy who gets many minutes. Yep. So, well, so I was actually at the fan appreciation game tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I got the ball and everything. So um, I kind of kept my eye on him a little bit. It was kind of hard because I was like way up in like two twelve row, like twelve, <laughs> like way up there. But um, you know, from what I could see, it didn't look like he was going one hundred percent, and it kind of confirmed it because he said as much in, in an interview. And we actually do right. have a clip of that that we'll go ahead and roll for you right now. No, it's hard to say. Um, you know, it's nice to be out there today and be in some situations and figure some things out. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm pleased about that. 
uh, didn't go too hard today, didn't want to risk anything and, you know, uh, going to be ready to go full out on Wednesday and, you know, hopefully uh, pick it up where I left off. So there, as we had just heard, you know, he said yeah, he didn't he didn't go you know too hard, right? right. So um, yeah, it kind of confirms it, right? Uh, and again, it's a game that's kind of a throwaway. Yeah, it had a little bit of meaning, you know, in terms of being able to have um, home ice advantage for any team in the playoffs, save Tampa Bay or Calgary if we happen to play either right. one of those. But uh, other than that, the game was kind of a throwaway. So I can see where he wouldn't be going 100%. And I was I was hoping he was just kind of pulling it back as opposed to <laughs> he wasn't able to go 100%. Right. So that's kind of what it sounds like. Well, it's good It's good for two two things, I guess. Like, he, he you can't really um, do what you, a game situation in practice, right? Yeah. So you're, you're not playing against, you're playing against teammates in practice. You're not going all out against a team. So this is good for him to do that. Mm -hmm. um, gets him to really test out his legs and I'm guessing his groin, I'm not really sure what the second injury was. Um, so, and again, it, he didn't blow it out like he did in Boston. He yeah. didn't get turned around by Marshawn and all that, so it's good <laughs> for him. Um, he di also didn't get eased into the game, I don't think, tonight. <laughs> he had over 22 minutes of ice time, which is a lot. Yeah, <laughs> but he wasn't going 100. percent But he was still out there for a lot of it. So mm -hmm. it was good for him to to get back into the action and, and get some heavy action yeah. in a way. No, I, I feel like they wanted to get him into a lot of game situations, and that's probably part of why he got so many minutes on his first game back. I think the other thing is, you know, he's used to doing what, like 27 minutes a night. Right. So yeah. 22 is maybe a little bit more of a walk in a park for him. Oh, when Vlasic um, and Braun were out, him and Burns were putting up closer to 30. Right. Minutes. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. So. Um, you know, I, I think one of the other things that I, I saw was the D pairings. I noticed that Carlson was paired back with Dylan tonight, mm -hmm. which is one of the things I love seeing because I like that pairing a lot better um, than seeing uh, him paired up with Vlasic, right? Yeah. And actually tonight was really interesting. Again, keeping in the theme of having your possession uh, guys together and the guys that have the, the really big minutes, Burns and Vlasic were paired up tonight, which was mm -hmm. interesting because I figured it was going to be Vlasic and Braun and then Ryan playing alongside Burns again. So I wasn't too comfortable with that, not like my opinion matters, but I wasn't really comfortable with that. But seeing Ryan paired up with Braun was oddly not pleasing. Pleasing is not the right word, because uh, I'm still kind of wary on Ryan, but it was a better pairing, I think. I think Braun had a good hold of that, uh, that how to keep that pairing from getting burned. Let's put it that way, right? Yeah. So I think Ryan might be a better partner with Braun just because Braun's a little more uh, grounded in the defensive zone, whereas Burns is a little bit more of the run and gun and he has to have a good guy on, on defense to back him up, right? Mm -hmm. And Shimmick was that guy for him. I don't think Ryan is. Looks like Vlasic is stepping into that role for, for Burnsy, which is perfect because that's pretty much what Vlasic's known for. And another guy that can that can really put in a lot of minutes, so it's good that Vlasic's getting back getting his game back as well right. too. And and that's again where we're talking about those guys that chew up a lot of minutes. You figure Carlson and Vlasic were paired together because because you wanted to have those guys to take a lot of minutes, right? Mm -hmm. If you have all three of those guys on different lines, you got to kind of spread the, the time out, but when you pair two of them up, okay, it's it's a lot better in terms of the minutes that they're going to be getting. It's just that they flipped it around so now he's with Burns. So, mm -hmm. cool. I like that. Um, I'm I'm happy with the pairings. Um, right. One other thing that we want to talk about, it's kind of injury related, actually it is injury related, but not Eric Carlson, Timo Meyer. Right. Yeah. Uh, he went down in the in the Edmonton game and I don't think it was too serious of an injury. Um, I mean, it's pretty much speculation at this point because it's an upper body injury, but um, he he went down and didn't come back and I think, I think he would have come back if it was a playoff game. I think, um, I don't think it was that big of a deal. I think they're just being mm -hmm. precautionary. I mean, that game was on Thursday night okay. in, in Edmonton. They hold him out until the first playoff game, which we think is going to be on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, that's almost a full week, and he's not going to get that rest again until the season's over. Mm -hmm. So uh, good for him to, to really – he's probably just banged up and give him some rest. There's no reason to play in the last game, yeah. the home game, so um, or the game that was tonight. So I think he's going to be fine. Uh, I'm not too worried about him. Yeah, I had uh, tweeted out, I probably tweeted out on the Fin Factor account as opposed to my personal one where I was saying, you know, I'm, I'm hoping, I wish I could believe that it is it is what the coaching staff says it is. Yeah. Like, oh, no, it's fine, I'll just be, he'll be back. But I've, we've just seen this too many times where it's there's actually a problem and then they say, oh, no, he's, he's fine, he'll be back. And then it seemed, turns out to be something more than what it was. So I'm, I'm hoping and praying that it's it's not as big as my mind tells me it is, but if the coaching staff isn't pulling a fast one on us or anything, then and he wants to be uh, ready for game one and he's actually healthy for game one, then 
I, again, we look at our depth and our lineup, and we'll talk about that later on too. But ah, uh, man, we're just such a deep team. Right. We really I'm just, are. I'm not worried until uh, game one, and he gets health, yeah a scratch. Right. Sure. Not a healthy scratch, but he's out and injured. Mm-hmm. Then I'll be like, okay, maybe it's something a little bit worse. Than yeah, that's fair. What it is, but yeah. I think I'm I'm confident that he will be playing in game one. Very good. So uh, let's look at take a look at the playoff matchups, mm-hmm. right? So this is for the entire league now. So we'll go ahead and we'll throw a graphic up on the screen right now for you guys to check out. And first we're going to look at the east side, right? Right. <laughs> east side. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> we're going to look at the Eastern Conference. So uh, Tampa Bay Lightning are going to be taking on the Columbus Blue Jackets, which is awesome. Uh, I hope Columbus comes out of this one. I mean, this is David and Goliath right here because Columbus <laughs> barely squeaked into the playoffs. Yeah. It came down to the wire. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And then, then we got Washington taking on Carolina. I love Carolina here. Uh, they're probably going to get beat, but I just love Carolina here anyway. So. Uh, yeah, I think they could surprise. Washington hasn't been as dominant, mm-hmm. I don't think, as they were last year. Maybe a little bit of a cup hangover. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, who knows? I think Carolina might be on a little bit of a run here, too. Mm-hmm. I don't really follow, but um, gosh, uh, it's too bad that the whole search thing is over with. Anyway, right. uh, New York Islanders are going to be taking on Pittsburgh. I just love seeing Pittsburgh lose. So. I mean, this is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> this is the the Barry Trotz is yeah. coaching in, in the Islanders, um, and it's amazing what he's done. Turning them around, I think he's going to be the winner of the Coach of the Year award, the Jack nice. Adams award. I think yeah, is what Jack it is. Adams. Yeah. Um, so they look fantastic. Good. And then the huge, huge one: Boston versus Toronto. This, yeah. We saw this one. Was, well, how many years ago it was? Um, four or something. Like that. I yeah. Forget what it was. But um, yeah, it was uh, the Toronto collapse where they were winning in Game Seven, and, <sighs> and Boston they came gave back up in like the third period, three goals and like I the last it was four. Was it some? Oh my goodness! It was bad, it was really, really bad. But anyway, so that's what we got in the East. Go ahead, and tell them about the West. Uh, the West we got. Nashville versus Dallas. Mm-hmm. Um, that should be it. Should be a Nashville win, I would think. But you never know. Nashville finished with less points than Sharks. We thought they were going to be way ahead. Mm-hmm. So uh, the other one is Calgary versus Colorado. That one is going to be a very <laughs> physical contest. I think Calgary is going to try and beat up Colorado. Colorado is going to try and use their one line to ride to glory. Right. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that works out, and we'll also see any kind of goalie controversy for Calgary. Yeah. Um, then we have Winnipeg, St. Louis. St. Louis is not a team I would want to face in the first round because they are on fire. Okay. And I know we're going to talk about this in a little bit about that doesn't really matter, but it's not the last streak of the last week. They've been on fire since about the All Star break. Okay. Uh, they were in last place in the league, I think, in January and completely turned around and made it into the playoffs uh, and riding on Bennington, their, their rookie goalie. Right. So, uh, a team that was looking like a very dangerous team in the league in on paper in the beginning of the season couldn't really put it together until halfway through, and now they're looking like the team that we were scared of in the beginning of the season. Wow. But then that brings us to... There's one other matchup. I can't remember who it is. Uh, <laughs> who was it? San Jose Sharks, Vegas Golden Knights. Oh, man. It's going to be gonna a good be, one. It's going to be rough. Too. I think uh, this is going to be a highlighted matchup, I think, in the yeah. league um, mm-hmm. because I think it was such a popular one last year. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's nice that they're going to Vegas for travel purposes. That's nice and close. Yeah. The closest opponent, at least, mm-hmm. in the playoffs because LA and Anaheim, you know, they right. didn't make it. Right. So um, it's going to be great. Um, I, I think... Uh, um, Going back to my point earlier about people talking about um, a lot of fans were upset about the Sharks not playing so well in the mm-hmm. last two weeks or so. And I kept saying, like, these games don't really matter. It's it. You could think of it almost as preseason. Like, this is the end of preseason before the start of the season. Um, the Sharks are just going to turn it on once once that once that hits. And Jumbo actually had a great quote here after the game when, when he was asked about um, basically their play in the last couple weeks and mm-hmm. stuff. So... We'll check that out. It's we've had good parts of games. We just got to put a you know sixty minute game um, together, and I, I think we will. Um, you know, we got two kind of practice shots at this again, and then um, you know the real season starts. So you know, hopefully we can put it together in Edmonton and put it together put it together again in Colorado and they get ready for Vegas. But uh, I think we can get out of this no problem. So we just heard Jumbo calling those the last two games, which they now have played kind of like practice games or, mm-hmm. or the last two times to get it ready for the playoffs, so he's not too worried about it. Um, we've talked to Mark Smith. We've talked to Douglas Murray, two former Sharks. We talked to Douglas Wilson, who is also a former Shark, mm-hmm. technically, um, and the GM. 
And we saw Drew Remenda this week talk to Kevin Kurz about um, if he was worried about the Sharks going right. into the playoffs because of their last play, the latest play. He said no. All of them said no. They're not worried. And none of them hesitated. They all said no. Mm -hmm. And now um, Pete DeBoer was basically asked the same question. Uh, af this was after the Edmonton game. Yeah. Um, if he was worried about the Sharks, if they'd be able to turn the switch on or off. And he had a <laughs> pretty funny quote. We'll yeah. listen to it right here. Here's, here's Pete DeBoer. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, you guys are going to write it. If we go on a roll, you're going to say it doesn't matter. And if we lose, you're going to say, you know, it does matter. So I, I've, I've had teams, you know, go into the playoffs both ways. And, you know, my personal opinion is I think the body of work matters. And our body of work is, is pretty good. We've, we've played good hockey for long stretches this year. And I don't doubt we can get back to that. So it was, it was pretty funny to see <laughs> Pete kind of ribbon the the I guess media the writers or the yeah. media uh, a little bit. You know, <laughs> if they do well, they're going to say oh, it doesn't matter, and if they don't do well, they're going to say oh it matters, right? <laughs> so they're not in a good place either way. Yeah. So um, I I kind of agree with them. Like I we know how well the Sharks play. The yeah. other thing that Doug Wilson had told us, and I think it was off camera, was um, the Sharks have played so well this year that they earned the right to have a bad patch and I think Pavelski had said it after this tonight's game saying that um, that it it's un or no maybe it was Thornton like it's unfortunate that they had that bad patch if this was earlier in the year they would have worked their way out of it <coughs> yeah. and played out of it and right now they're playing out of it and going right into the playoffs yeah and actually it was Doug Murray who had said they've earned that opportunity or the the ability to have a bad stretch there um, they, they've earned that right so um, that's in episode 44 if you guys want to go back and check that one out it's a pretty good episode I think you'll enjoy it um, one thing that's not up for interpretation like the media is able to spin things one way or the other is the fact that the Vegas Golden Knights have 93 points and if they were a team in the east they would not have made the playoffs yeah. <laughs> so there's that to consider right that kind of goes to show the weakness of the Pacific Division. <clears throat> yeah. um, Sharks and Calgary were leading it, and they were so far ahead. And everyone else, Kings, Ducks, even Vegas, yeah. were not up. Uh, Coyotes just missed playoffs. So, uh, yeah, I, they're just not as strong as they were as last year. Yeah, so, I mean, and, and, you know, somebody looking at that might say, well, okay, who cares about the points, right? It's the way that they're playing in the last stretch of games right before they go into playoffs that we really should be looking at. So why don't we look at the last stretch of games between those two teams? Well, Vegas' last 10, they went 3-5-2. and two. Okay. The Sharks went 3-6-1. and one. Okay. <laughs> so 3-7, and not, seven essentially, is, yeah. Is not really, much difference, yeah, right. really. So, yeah. I, and the Sharks have played better overall during the season. Right. Accumulated right. more points. Right. We've also had large injuries. And now they had Mark Andre Fleury out for some of that, yes. But I mean, we had Carlson, Eric Carlson out. Pavelski was out for a while. There you go. Um, now we have Timo out. Right, which is game, horrible. Not but, a big deal. Yeah. But yeah, I, both teams have had their injuries. <laughs> right. And I'm sure we've had guys playing through stuff that they haven't talked about right. from both sides and everything, right. too. So um, I don't know. I think it's going to be a great matchup. I don't think that, you know, Vegas. Like everyone say, oh, Vegas has our number. I, I just don't think so. I don't think Vegas has our number. I think it's going to be a really good battle. I think we've tied the series, se season series with them 2 2, wasn't it? Right. And so, I, I just I don't <clears throat> think in a seven game series that Vegas is going to pull out the win. Now, Vegas' strategy for the most part is kind of counterattack style with speed and numbers. So they try and turn the puck over high in the zone or in the neutral zone and then turn it around and, and shove it down your throat like right away. Um, they had success with that last year. I think they're not having as much success this year. I think a lot of people have studied the tape of how Washington beat them, um, and you kind of slow them down a little bit. You take away that speed, their game is not quite there. Now, their defenseman, I think, is their biggest Achilles heel. Okay. They don't really have that great puck-moving defenseman that you kind of need, like a power play quarterback type. Now, they have Schmidt. He's not terrible. Mm -hmm. um, but he only had, how many points did he have? 20, 37 points, I oh, think. Uh, Shea Theodore. Or, sorry, Theodore. Yeah. 37 <laughs> points on the year. Um, that <laughs> We had, Eric Carlson had more points than that, and he played in 26 less games. Something like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like just And Eric Carlson's not our, our leading defenseman. Right. So <laughs> yeah. Our leading defenseman led our team in scoring mm -hmm. with 83 points in 82 yeah. games. So, so just over a point per game. Two different... Two different, wildly different style of, yep. of teams. I think the Sharks are going to drive the play more. 
um, we see them possess the puck more. Yeah, yeah. I think what we saw in the last Vegas game, the Sharks were more dominant, I think, for the majority of the game. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good indication of how the series is going to go. Now, I'm not saying the Sharks are going to sweep. I never expect the Sharks right. to sweep. There's going to be losses. There's probably going to be an ugly loss in there, and everyone's going to be all up in arms saying, oh, we're going to lose it. Like, Vegas is going to kill us. And, <laughs> you know, it... it we we like to do this is why we do a weekly show because we don't like to go so high and yeah. high highs and low Ebbs lows and flows highs and lows yeah right however we're going to change that up during the playoffs because we can't do a weekly show during the playoffs yeah that one gets kind of difficult so uh, i think what we've decided we're going to do is uh we're going to do a post game for after every playoff game so uh we have the okay from the uh, the real bosses in charge right. uh to come out after uh after bedtime for the kids right and uh go ahead and re record a show for you guys so we're just going to do live shows we're going to do a live show right after the game for at least eh, probably an hour after the game sure um you can join us live on the chat and uh we can discuss in person in a way sort of live i guess it's sure. live yeah uh and if you can't catch it no worries uh it'll be posted up on the page and you can watch it later I will also post it the next morning as a podcast, so the people who don't tune in on YouTube and you just listen on podcasts, you'll be able to at least listen afterwards. Right. And we'll also be doing a normal, uh, a normal recording, but instead of doing it on Sunday, we'll be doing it after the series has wrapped up for each series. So of which I'm, I'm expecting four. Right. So yeah. <laughs> uh, there's that. Uh, that's that's basically what the the format's going to be like for the show for playoffs. Um, it's it's going to be a little bit different, but you know we kind of have to adapt to you know the way that you know playoffs are going to play out and right. we, it just doesn't make sense to try to do a show after three playoff games and so this is how we're going to decide to do it so hopefully it works out yep. looking forward to it but going back to uh, Vegas. the Vegas game and everything yep. so I'm I'm not sure how they're going to deal with Burns and Eric Carlson all day long all up in your face uh, we talked about some of the matchups right or we, we can't talk about some of the matchups in terms of the forward core and everything but on the defensive side we already talked about Shea Theodore being their, their leading defenseman in terms of points yeah. um, they don't have the blue line like we do that can drive the play um, they are a team that counterattacks. they're a team that tries to make that initial save or tries to do well in the defensive zone and then turn the puck back up and make that transition game their bread and butter uh, if we can find a way to shut that down clog up the neutral zone uh, get the puck back it's just going to be in your face all day, every day. So uh, I just don't see them matching up well in terms of the forward lines. Mm -hmm. But I also don't see, I see them having a very hard time dealing with uh, the constant blue line rush, especially when you're talking about the pairings that we saw tonight, which was Vlasic and Burns together. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's a stalwart on defense, if he gets back to his game, and I think he's gotten back to his game now. I think Vlasic's playing much better. Yes. Yeah. And then alongside Burns, who's the wild man, you don't know what he's going to do bringing that puck up, right? And then you're looking at Eric Carlson back with Dylan again, that pairing was phenomenal, right? Dylan was, was allowing Eric Carlson to be Eric Carlson, and when Eric Carlson is being himself, my goodness, uh, good luck. You know, he's he's bringing it through the neutral zone. I saw a nice little play, just just one of many, but I saw one nice little play tonight even where he was uh, bringing the puck up and it looked like he was going to pass it, so they were kind of staying away from him because they are trying to take the pass, and then all of a sudden he just kind of, he opens his legs real wide to kind of protect mm -hmm. the puck and he just kind of stick handles right through him and he just walked right across the blue line. And it's just, just spoon feed that to them, man. You, they're just going to, you're going to have a healthy dose of that. You and know? that's something that the Sharks have been missing yeah. since he's been out. And it really changes the, the, the way that they play and the way that the other teams yeah. play against the Sharks. I'll go so far to say it's something the Sharks have been missing in their franchise history. I mean, they oh, yeah. haven't had a guy like that before that just is so confident carrying the puck Boyle. right across the I'd line. Say Boyle. Yeah, okay. Boyle, he had a Boyle similar was very style good. with the wide legs. And Boyle was very good, yes. Not as good. Exactly. Sorry, Danny Boyle. Not saying you weren't good. <laughs> I'm saying you weren't as good as Carlson. There was a signing one time and I walked up to him and I said, I told my son, hey, so my son, this is one of the best offensive defensemen to ever play the game. He says, I'll take that. <laughs> so, no disrespect at all to Danny Boyle, uh, but Eric Carlson is Eric Carlson, man. Uh, it's a whole different animal. Yep. So, I just don't see them matching up, not just with the four core, but I, I mean, I don't see them on picking up the defense. No. I, they, they can't. They can't yeah. take that rush. And and they have two very good scoring lines. Uh, was it Mark So Carlson and now Mark Stone on that line? Yeah. And then they have uh, Statsny and uh, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on their names. Patch Ready. <laughs> Patch Ready. Yeah. Who is the big acquisition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I forget the other forward, but their top two lines are pretty good. They're good. They're yeah. very good top two lines. Um, the Sharks' top two lines are equally as good. 
Now the difference is going to be that third line. The Thornton, LeBanc, and... Sorensen. Sorensen. <laughs> Man. 60-hour work right. week for this guy, I, I, so I just, give him a pass, folks. <laughs> I'm nearing the end of tax season. I'm a tax accountant. That's what I do, so my day job. Uh, so anyway, um, I think that third line, I kept I keep tweeting that out almost every single yeah, game, yeah, yeah. That and they've been the team, the line that's been on fire lately for the last month at mm-hmm. least. So I think this is what is going to be the difference maker in almost every matchup yeah. for the Sharks in the playoffs is going to be that third line. Now, let's talk about briefly the playoff, what the advantage is for home ice in the playoffs and why it's such a big deal, right? Okay. So um, it, the home team gets to choose line changes. They get to put out their line last. And what that means is on every single faceoff, except for icings, whatever, that's mm-hmm. a different thing. Every single faceoff, the Vegas Knights are going to have to put out their line, who they want out. The Sharks get to look and see who that is and go, okay, we want this line to match up against that one. Right. So now if there's a mismatch, that's where Vegas is going to be like, well, we have to put our fourth line out because the, the other guys are tired and we just need a break. We're going to put them out there. Now the Sharks will say, okay, well, let's mismatch it here. We'll put our first line out against their fourth line. Uh, hopefully we can keep them stuck on the ice where they can't right. get a change. And then that's when you're really going to get an opportunity to score. So um, that's that's pretty much the biggest advantage, I think, yeah. for having home ice. Uh, but there's another one, right? The putting the six down? The putting the six down? No, no, no. So that they actually changed that. That was something that was... Uh, they, it used to be the home ice... You put your stick down second uh, in the faceoff circle. Now it's it's which zone you're in, I believe. So if you're in the defensive zone, you have to put your stick down first, and uh, the neutral other zone team, is yeah. home. Yeah, for neutral away. zone. Yeah, after like a goal scored or something like that. Yeah, then you the other team uh, um, has to put their stick down first. Home team puts their stick down second. Basically, gives them an advantage in trying to win that faceoff. So that's a more of a subtle one. Um, it does help, but it's more subtle than being able to say I want this line out there against right. the line that you just put out. So. Um, it, is it a huge advantage? Yes, while you're at home. However, you know, of course, unless it goes to seven games, you're going to get the equal amounts of times where you're allowed to put your right. guys out there, you know, per game, essentially. Uh, so I think the bigger advantage comes in the second period okay. when you have when you're in the offensive zone and they're stuck in their defensive yeah. zone. Yeah. Because then if you can get a mismatch there and you pin them in that zone, you win the face up and you pin them. I yeah. think that's going to be a big advantage. Yeah, the long change is definitely uh, more difficult for the other team to handle when mm-hmm. you have uh, you guys are stuck out there and tired. So. Um, yeah, there's there are some distinct advantages for for home ice advantage. So, uh, one of the things actually we wanted to bring up was the amount of goal scorers and how many goals those scorers huh. have on each team. So, Vegas has how many? Four 20 goal scorers, I believe. Five. Four, five, five 20 goal scorers. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, five 20 goal scorers. That's great. That's awesome. <laughs> um, San Jose has four 30 goal scorers as of tonight because Evander Kane scored his 30th goal tonight, mm. which is awesome. So, um, not only do we have more goal scorers that are uh, 30 goals, but goal when you scores. talk about uh, how many 20 goal scorers we have as well, we have a ton of those as well. I mean, basically our team is a goal scoring machine and right. it's not just a line. Like if you look at Colorado, they have a goal scoring machine huh. too. It's called their first line. And uh, they went cold the last and two months. Exactly. When, when you are so top heavy, when you're so loaded mm-hmm. in just one area and that goes cold, you're done. Right. The thing that I like about the Sharks is that, you know, if Evander Kane is not scoring that night, well, LeBanc might put one in, or Nyquist might put one in, or Sorensen might put one in. Or, I mean, you could just go on and on, and you can rely on all these guys, and in your top nine at least, you could rely on all these guys. Somebody's probably going to put the puck in the net, right? So Kevin LeBanc is our sixth leading scorer. Right. Right? Yeah. If you were on Vegas, he would be their second leading scorer right behind their first. <laughs> so Marcia so has 37? Goals? No. No. 25. 25 goals. What was I saying? 37 points. Oh, 37 points of Shea Theodore. Sorry. Yeah. 25 goals for uh, for Marcia So there. Leading the team. Leading with the 25 team. 25 goals. Yeah. And he had uh, 59 <laughs> points, I believe. Yeah. So they didn't have anyone over 60 points on their team, uh, which is amazing. And so Kevin I, LeBanc, who everyone wanted to trade, <laughs> um, would be the second best 
player on their right. team. Right, so if we had Marshall so on our team, he would be the sixth leading scorer, yeah. just ahead of Kevin LeBanc. So, again, so much firepower on the Sharks team. It's just a matter of putting it together and making sure that we're actually putting the puck in the net because how many times have we seen us hitting the glass, right? Yes. Uh, firing it wide, which sometimes it's a strategy, but oftentimes it's just missing. Right. Um, then the other thing, obviously, we're talking about team defense and goaltending and all that stuff, which we don't want to beat that dead horse anymore. We're, <laughs> we, we have our opinion. Other people have their opinion. Opinion. I think we have kind of the same thoughts that, like you just said, Mark Smith and um, all these other folks like, yeah. have, have been saying, you know, it's, it's not going to be a problem. It's, it's okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, they feel it's more on the defensive side than it is for the goaltending or a combination of the two. It's not just Jones sucks. Um, so <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't see that being an issue as long as we tighten down a little bit in the defensive zone and we're able to get that puck up to the forwards. Again, that top nine, you're going to roll those first three lines, I think, and they're just going to destroy. Well, part of the, I think part of the defense is controlling the puck. Yeah. Like just the puck possession is going to kind of like similar with the checking, right? You're going to have less checks because you have the puck more. You're right. not you're not hitting people when you have the puck. So right. kind of the same same thinking of you're not going to give up as many goals because you're going to control the puck more. Very good. Okay, so yeah. Moving on from all that, we uh, so we talked about kind of like the bracket and everything and how that's going to break down and who's doing uh, who's playing against who. But we are having our own bracket, the NHL bracket challenge. If you bracket will. challenge, we're yeah. going to put the URL down right here. Very good. And you guys can all go onto NHL.com. You have to be signed in, and you can join our bracket challenge. And we are going to give away the winner is going to get a Fin Factor hat. Very nice. Which is pretty nice. So um, I'll put it right there. Uh, <laughs> So join our, our bracket challenge, and the winner's going to get a hat. And we'll give you a shout on the show. Maybe even give you a picture. If you get a picture with the hat on, we'll throw yeah. you up on the show. And again, if you've purchased anything, please do send the pictures in, because again, we see you guys buying stuff, but we yeah. haven't got any pictures. Yeah. So uh, please do. That'd be awesome. Um, anything else on the bracket challenge you want to touch on? Uh, that's pretty it. Okay. Pretty much it. Uh, we both joined, so we're both in there right now. <laughs> yes. For some reason, my name is blank. Yes. I don't know. There's Aaron and... <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so uh, one of the things you were talking about with the uh, format, the playoff format. Now we talked about the our bracket challenge thing, but there's something about the the way the brackets shake so out that you don't like. I, the playoffs used to be one seed versus eight in in the two conferences, mm -hmm. and it just to me it, it kind of rewards the regular season a little bit more. So the teams that are dominant, like Calgary and Tampa Bay, winning right. the conference, uh, would play the lowest seed. Which they still do because of the wild cards, but then when you get to the other teams, it's it kind of gets a little convoluted. And they used to reseed, so if an eight seed knocked off a one seed, that two seed becomes the number one seed, and they play that eight seed. Mm -hmm. They don't do that now. There's no reseeding in the second yeah. round, which is kind of disappointing. So uh, it was just in the news this week that next season they could have changed it and gone back to the old way of formatting. Um, and they're not going to do that. They decided to keep the way it is, even though there's a lot of people that don't like it. I don't think a lot of players really necessarily like it. Mm -hmm. So um, the reason for that is Seattle will be coming into the league after next season, and they're going to have to realign all the divisions and figure out where they're going to play and who's going to play who. So I think then that would make the most sense to change up how they do the playoff. Right playoff format. Yeah, so why bother doing it now if you're going to have to do it when Seattle comes right. in the league anyway? Right? They're going to change it next year yeah. for one year. It's just silly because then they'll probably have to change it yeah. just to accommodate Yeah, and, and you know, you've got Calgary and San Jose, which are 1-2 in the West, and they're going to have to, someone's going to have to get eliminated before the conference finals, whereas in the other bracket where you have 1-8, through eight, assuming they went out, then they would play each other in the conference, conference finals, finals as opposed to a divisional final. Right. And again, you want to reward, reward the best teams in the league. And I understand what they're doing. They're trying to make sure that one team from each division makes it into you know the conference final. Right. But They're also <laughs> trying to divisional rivalry. They're trying to build yeah. up these rivalries, right? That's but part of it, too. And then travel is another thing. There's yeah. less travel. However, you're on the West Coast. Calgary's in your division. Yeah, that's not close to San Jose. Yeah, I mean it's even further if you were LA or Anaheim or Calgary. It's it's a big long distance. See, and the funny thing to me is like yes, there's divisional rivalries and whatnot, but 
those divisional rivalries have already been set. They've been set for a very long time. We're already playing these teams more often than any other teams in the league. We already hate LA. <laughs> um, we already teased uh, Mike Johnson about Anaheim not even making the playoffs, let alone winning the division <laughs> or winning the conference. <laughs> that was genius. Um, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know that we need to have another format that you know brings these rivalries in. It's like I, I would. I, the way people are going to interpret this is me saying, I don't want to play the LA Kings because I'm scared of the LA Kings, or I don't want to play Vegas Golden Knights because I'm scared of the Vegas Golden Knights. I'm not. I want to see variety, right? I'd like a little bit more diversity. Instead of seeing the same teams every year, like I'd rather yeah, us get, play Winnipeg I one get time. I'm sick of it a little I'd bit. I'd like to play Minnesota, you know what I mean? Well, I'd, I want to play, if we get the second seed, I want to play the seventh seed. Sure. If we get the sixth seed, you know, I want to. Whatever, but I just like to see more teams in that blunder, if you will. Right, right. Uh, as opposed to oh, I, you're locked into like, playing the same good good teams in your yeah. division. You know, it's what I'd like to see is just do conference mm -hmm. one through eight. Yeah, don't even reward divisions. I would say even get rid of the divisions. <laughs> what? Why? Why do you need them? I cannot answer I, that. I mean, you'd have to figure out how to do all the games and all that. That's a whole other. Aaron's topic. asking for overhaul. <laughs> well, 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 when Seattle comes in, we're going to need it anyway. That's true. So yeah. we could talk about this in the summertime for a okay. show that's a, a dead time in hockey news. <laughs> so we'll shelve that for now. Right. Um, Cuda news, though. The Barracuda are in the playoffs, officially in the Calder Cup playoffs, which is awesome. I yeah. uh, kind of knew they were going to be in there anyway, but again, it was Official. a clinching scenario, right? right? Yeah. So uh, they did clinch, which is great. Um, if you are not watching the Barracuda, you should be because there are a lot of really good players that are now ending their junior careers, I guess, or mm -hmm. junior seasons, and they're eligible to play in the Barracuda. So one of those being uh, Chekovic. Chikovic. Chikovic. Yeah. Ivan, I think is his first name? Yeah. Okay. So uh, he actually, I saw him play yesterday, which as of this recording would be yesterday, but um, I mean, I'm sitting there sitting with my son. I'm like, hey, there's that guy right there, number 82, uh, Chikovic. He's really good. Check him Check him out. And three seconds later, he puts it in the net. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> just bang goal. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, no, it was... Nostradamus over here. Yeah, it's not the first time. So. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it, it was just great. It was it was cool seeing him out there and him just playing really well and doing a good job. And, um, you know, this is a guy, he's a future shark. He really yeah. is. He's a very talented guy. He's a big body. And, uh, you, you know, going out to the games and being able to watch these guys play right now, it's a treat. So... There's him. There's yes. also Kotkov. I think his first name is Vladislav. I'm probably totally wrong on that. But anyways, his last name is Kotkov. <laughs> I'm I'm guessing Vladislav because he's Russian, right? Right. So, anyway, last name is Kotkov. Uh, he scored his first professional goal um, today, actually, as of this recording again. And so just really nice moment for him, being able to get that one out of the way right away. It's his first game, and he puts it in. So, um, again, Kotkov is another guy that they thought was going to be pretty good. Someone we've talked about it on the show uh, previously. I can't remember which episode, but it was it was a while ago, and we talked about him saying, you know, he should be pretty good. And then Ryan Merkley, defense boy turned defense man. He, uh, <laughs> he got called up finally, which is great. Yeah. Um, he's not played a game yet, but I'm expecting you'll see him in playoffs because they, they did call him up. I think they have a couple more games this week to finish yeah. up their season. Oh, that's just so probably there's another two, yeah. three games left. He'll probably get in. Yeah, by yeah, then. yeah. Okay, but yeah, that's exciting to see our first, our first overall pick, yeah. or not first overall, but first round pick right. from this last, uh, last draft because he was highly touted mm -hmm. defenseman who is kind of like a Carlson and Burns. I mean, he's not as big as Burns, <laughs> but he's a, he's a little guy. But he's he's he'll grow into his body. But he's very highly skilled on the back end, so he'll be exciting to see what he can do with the right. Barracuda level. Mm -hmm. And maybe make some damage in uh, the playoffs. Yeah, Their and then team just got a lot more dangerous. Uh, seriously, they did. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. I mean, they, then you've got uh, Blickfeld, who's mm -hmm. still. I think he's in the playoffs right now, though. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's not coming across quite yet. And then they just signed a new goalie, Smelievsky. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, he's not in yet. He's not in yet either. Yeah. So um, there's there's a lot of guys that are really really talented that haven't uh, quite made it across to the Barracuda just yet because they're still playing, but. Um, it's just going to be really good times. Definitely go yeah. check out the Barracuda games. Again, $10 for a general admission ticket. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and they had the other day $2 hot dogs and dollar Every sodas. Friday, if it's a Friday dollar game. beers, right? Yeah, $2 beers, $1 hot oh, dogs every Friday. Yeah. yeah, so you're only allowed to borrow, buy four hot dogs at a time. <laughs> <laughs> only four hot dogs at a time. That's sad that you know that. When you go with a family of four, <laughs> yeah. you got to know these things. Paul goes so, by himself. Yeah, I do. <laughs> buy four for myself and buy a couple beers. <laughs> so anyway, um, let's see who else. Oh, Shortridge, the, the goaltender, Shortridge. Right. And there was another goaltender, uh, uh, something Kupski, 
Andrew something? Kupski. Yeah, anyway. Uh, the two of them were there for a signing at the Barracuda game, which my son and I went to, and uh, he got something signed, which was really cool. And as I was walking, I was getting probably another hot dog and a beer or something, I don't know. Um, I turned and I saw them walking with uh, their handler, if you will, the guy with a really big, long beard. And uh, they were going to the elevator, and I was like, hey, do you mind if I just snap a picture really quick? He's like, yeah, sure. So they got in there, like, smiling, took this picture. I think we have a picture of it. I can yeah. we'll post, post it up, it up here. right now. There you go. So uh, really nice guys. Uh, when we were signing, he's like, hey, thanks for coming out. Like, I guess he was saying that to everyone. I was like, oh, that's really cool, as opposed to sign here. You know, so he was like very cordial, and it was, it was great. Well, so, how many times has he been asked for an autograph? Probably, right? yeah, not that yeah, much. For a picture, like, oh, this guy recognizes me. <laughs> Who's this Fin Factor? Are they, are they from Finland? Yeah, there you go. Oh, they must be the, Swiss. The Finland right? Factor, yeah, Swiss, <laughs> no, Swedish. You mean? Whatever. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so uh, really, really nice guys, basically, and I'm sure they're very good at their jobs as well because uh, the Sharks signed them. So, right, yeah. Uh, looking forward to those guys as well. There's one other player that was on that list that you wanted to talk about, and I cannot remember who that player was. Uh, Bebo. Bebo. Bebo won an award. Yes. Uh, he, uh, I don't remember the whole full name of the award because it was such a long title, but uh, he basically... Community Service Award. Yeah. He, he uh, had the most impact in the San Jose community. So we were talking about this earlier, and I'm like, okay, think about it this way. He's the college kid that is good, good grades, plays a sport, needs that one extra thing to kind of extracurricular to give him, <laughs> give him that push, right? And I'm not talking about buying his way into college either. Sure. But, um, <laughs> Uh, community service. He's doing a lot out there in the community, in the San Jose community, and uh, he's a big impact person in that. So that's big bonus points for him. Yeah. He is a, he gets it. He knows what a professional athlete entails. I can see him getting called up next year, and sorry, Dell, but I think Dell's going to be gone. I think Bebo is going to take over that backup position yeah. and see what he can do at the NHL level. Yeah, and again, I don't think this is a reflection of Dell being a poor goaltender in any way, shape, or form. I think this is all about cap space and just trying to free up as much as possible, right? And I think you've got these other guys that we just talked about, Shortridge and Kupski and whoever else they've got in the fold for uh, goaltending prospects. And I think they're going to be able to step in and you know maybe back up, uh, what's his name, uh, Coronash yep. uh, at the AHL's level. I mean, Coronash is ready to go. He's That's ready it. to he start. He looks like he's ready to start at the AHL level. Yes. He's yeah. kind of been splitting already. Yeah, so he and Bebo, Bebo have been... You know, splitting that time, and it's really kind of like a one A one B situation, almost mm -hmm. like what we're seeing in Calgary, right? So it's almost kind of been well, they goofy, gotta, but they got to free up that money for Carlson. That's what I'm talking about. So Carlson cash, anything and everything that they can get. Now Dell's making not a whole lot, but he's making more than Bebo is. So you know, I think if that's basically perform at the same level or better. I know. And, and that's cheaper. Just it. That's just it. That's the salary cap conundrum. So I, I think we do probably see Dell. Um, go at the draft, which was unfortunate, but I, I think that's the best thing for the team and maybe the best thing for Dell too. Um, if he's getting pushed out anyway, maybe he goes to a place where they think he might be a starter and he mm -hmm. might get a little bit more time. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But uh, unfortunately, that's that's kind of what I see in terms of it shaking out. And uh, I mean, he's been a great guy. I, I mean, after practices and stuff, we, we talked about um, Brendan Dillon yeah. being, you know, one of the best guys. And in fact, there was some award that Media, right? <laughs> media award, yeah. The media award. They, they voted on him for the best guy to interview for the year, and they just created this award this year. It's the first yeah. award. I think it's. I think Kerr's. I think Kevin Kerr's. And if you're watching Kerr's, explain. Or correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Kerr's had a lot to do with this as the anti Vlasic award. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I called it. I was like, this is basically the award that Vlasic will never win, right? Because he, he's his interviews are just so. Short, yeah, and dry and curt, and yeah. yeah, he just doesn't seem to like answering your questions. He seems annoyed at every <laughs> single question. We love what you do, Kevin, but um, yeah, I guess Vlasic doesn't. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so so Dylan got that award, which is really nice. So good for him. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I I, I don't know. I, I think yeah, we'll probably see some people. Um, it'll shake up. I think the roster shake up a little bit next season. Is not because they're they're bad players or anything. I think it's just because of cap issues. But that, that's a whole so other thing we'll get into we'll, in the summer. Yeah, you got it. So we'll uh, we'll save that for later. And again, just to remind you guys for playoffs, we are going to be doing, uh, hopefully we'll be doing a live show after every game. And uh, we will do a recorded show after series. the series is over so that we have something else that we can put out for you guys as well. Okay? Uh, anything else you wanted to Hit Talk up our about, store. Yep. Plug the merch. Uh, go for hit it. Hit up our store. We got t-shirts. We got hats. Yep. We got women's t-shirts. 
we got stickers and it helps support the show. So uh, we'd love that and that's it for the merch. Also, if anyone is interested in trading baubles or any sort of thing like that, I have the orange you glad, the orange uh, shirzies that they uh, were passing out at the Cootie Games. If you have anything like that, I kind of wouldn't mind trying to start some sort of like a swap meet kind of thing. I think it'd be <laughs> cool. Um, so, you know, I've got a bunch oh, of extra stuff. I know what we're going to talk about. What? The EA SHL oh, team that, that we started as well. So we'll get to that in a second. But if yeah. you have anything, you know, um, not merch, but. Uh, um, Giveaway stuff wise that you know you'd like to maybe trade something that you don't like or something that you think you would like to have instead. Uh, go ahead and hit us up on any of the socials. Let us know, or if you're in Discord or Reddit or whatever, yeah. um, go ahead and let us know. Now, EA SHL. This is a NHL 19 thing. So if you are a PS4 owner and you uh, play NHL 19 and you're not in a club or you don't like your club or whatever the case is, <laughs> um, go ahead and search for us TFF as the abbreviation uh, for the club name and you find us it's open to the public so you guys can just go ahead and join us I mean, trust me no one's going to join us unless they've heard of us before so um yeah just go ahead and join in we're actually we played me and one other guy i think his last name was fulcher or something mm -hmm. we played two games of threes and we won both those games it wasn't actually like club related but it was uh, somebody from the club and uh, yeah so we uh, we dominated it was fun i didn't think so we were going to win at all i thought we were going to get blown out and uh, we That's dominated awesome. so it was, it was yeah. actually really nice so um, I'm not going to lie to you guys, uh, I, I'm decent at the game, but really my motivation for this whole thing, and you know this, is that I get to play house. Um, because when the club does well, it unlocks things for the arena, and I can basically play house in the arena. That's he my motivation. He just wants to build the arena. I want to build the arena, guys. So help me out. I, I mean, even if you're not playing with me, if you guys just play on your own, that's totally cool. Yeah. I have no problem with that, because I'll just wake up to a whole bunch of things that I get to do in the arena. Awesome. Anyway, uh, I think that pretty much wraps it up for episode number 45. Yes. Right? Okay, good. So, hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. Please make sure that you leave some comments down below because we love interacting with you guys. So, um, yeah, again, please do that. So, that being said, we'll see you early this week. Oh, will we? Yeah. Wednesday. Wednesday? Oh, yeah, because... Game one. That's Hello. right. Well, but this episode is going to come out on a Monday still. Right. So, so, we'll see you in two days. Right. Okay, so... Thanks so much for tuning in, and we will see you in two days. In two days, apparently. <laughs> bye, bye bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com, where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.